Okay, welcome to uh, a lecture that's uh, intended to serve a, as an introduction to Unix and Unix-like operating systems. Uh, this is a part of a series of lectures uh, for an introduction to high-performance computing class that's taught at the University of Texas at San Antonio. So I'm going to introduce you to what a Unix operating system is, and to in order to understand that, we have to go back to the beginning. So before Unix, uh, there were certainly computers and uh, operating systems, but they were typically machine hardware dependent. So uh, they were written in language like assembler, which is essentially a human unreadable language that uh, talks to the hardware. And while these systems were very fast, uh, they weren't portable. So in other words, if you were running uh, software that was written for Motorola hardware, you could not take it to HP hardware. And uh, so this, this created a, uh, a significant problem uh, in writing applications for computers back then. So uh, in 1969, a couple of guys at AT&T, uh, namely Ken Thompson and Dennis Ritchie, uh, wrote a, an operating system uh, that they called Unix. And initially it wasn't written in C. Uh, but in the early 70s, they rewrote it in C. Uh, they rewrote all of Unix in C, uh, which, by the way, C language was uh, invented by Ritchie himself. So in the early 70s, they rewrote Unix in C in order to be portable, such that the, pr the uh, programs, the applications that were written for the operating system could run on all hardware, or the operating system itself, rather. Uh, so initially, portability was uh, its strength, okay? Um, back then, there was a law that I think has subsequently been revoked, but uh, that uh, prevented AT&T from selling its software uh, to make a profit. So uh, they were only allowed to charge a nominal fee and distribute it mostly amongst uh, academic universities and, and other research institutions. And one of the first uh, research institutions or, or universities that took a hold of this Unix software was at the University of California at, at Berkeley. So they took, uh, they took the original uh, Unix that was written by uh, Thompson and Ritchie and began to develop their own. And uh, they added some more features. So they, they essentially picked up where AT&T left off, uh, one of the most important ubiquitous features, uh, if you ever use the Unix machine, is the Vi Editor. So the Vi Editor that we still use today was uh, developed at Berkeley uh, and, uh, and distributed with the first uh, release of its own software, which they called BSD Unix. So over time, uh, because of the open distribution of the Unix, uh, many companies picked up and developed their own brand or their own flavor of Unix. So Sun, uh, which of course became or is now Oracle, uh, has its own brand to date uh, called Solaris. Uh, IBM had a uh, version called AIX. Uh, HP had a version called HP UX. And uh, of course, uh, all Apple Macintoshes, uh, whether you know it or not, uh, underneath their beautiful uh, uh, exterior uh, user, graphical user interface uh, is a Unix machine uh, underneath running the kernel. So uh, this fragmentation though caused some problems uh, and, and we'll get to that in a second but the uh, eventually uh, Novell uh, uh, bought AT&T's Unix um, software uh, team, I guess, or development, uh, the business, and they released uh, the trademark to Unix uh, to an open standards body uh, called uh, XOpen, uh, excuse me, XOpen, uh, which then became the open group, uh, or merged with the open group. So. Uh, the open group uh, consists of many companies uh, of which uh, these are a part of, Oracle, uh, which, used to, which used to be Sun, uh, IBM, HP are all members of the open group. And the o open group is essentially a standards body which 
tries to control the, the Unix system. Um, so the, the fragmentation caused uh, issues. While uh, Unix was atten int initially intended to be uh, portable, uh, it didn't always turn out to be that way because there was so much fragmentation, uh, because there was a lack of standards. Uh, so uh, IEEE, uh, which is, of course, the uh, Institution of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, um, uh, initially developed a standard the, called the Portable Operating System Interface for Computer Environments. Or other, otherwise known as POSIX. Uh, and this POSIX is essentially a standard uh, way to develop the Unix system so, uh, to address this issue of portability. So any Unix system that is written to be POSIX compliant should theoretically uh, be portable from any machine architecture to another. So later on, uh, in, in what we're left with today is a joint initiative between IEEE and the Open Group, uh, which resulted in this single Unix specification, uh, of which uh, there is the hyperlink to now, which you can go out and read. I think they're uh, preparing to release uh, version 4 of that soon. Um, but any software that's written to these standards should uh, be truly portable and, and run uh, cross-platform or cross-hardware. So later on, uh, in the 90s specifically, uh, Linux and GNU uh, kind of took off. So Linux is a free Unix that was written by Linus Torvald. Uh, these names are kind of important because they'll come up again. These are, uh, I guess, quite famous or important people in computer science. Uh, or in the uh, specifically in the open source movements. Um, so Linux is uh, distributed under the uh, GNU general public license. We'll probably talk later in the course about what uh, these type of open source licenses are a little bit. Um, and GNU uh, is also known as the Fr uh, Free Software Foundation is run by a guy named Richard Stallman. Uh, GNU is a recursive acronym kind of silly, but it, it actually stands for GNU's not Unix. And what GNU actually does is supply many of the application tools for Linux. So uh, Linux itself at its core is, a well, I guess just a kernel, which we'll t speak about in momentarily. Um, but uh, you can't do much with just a kernel. You, you need uh, applications to do useful tasks. So that's where GNU provides a lot of the free applications that are then distributed with li uh, Linux. So, uh, you know, down here uh, I make a comment that I say that, you know, uh, GNU Linux, Linux, Unix, sometimes they're used uh, very loosely. Uh, while they're uh, technically not the same thing, uh, they're used loosely in speech uh, quite often, very interchangeably. And in fact, when I refer to Unix or Linux, uh, uh, in my speech, I, I'm essentially talking about uh, the, the the same thing. I may I may I will use the words Unix and Linux interchangeably. Most modern uh, Unix machines are some flavor version of Linux. So sometimes you'll also see this this idea that uh, Unix uh, written, you know, or, or this uh, different distributions or flavors of Linux written as this because. In a Unix machine, the the a, the asterisk is actually a wildcard character, uh, which uh, or is part of something called regular expressions that uh, we'll certainly learn about later, uh, which uh, could be anything uh, actually. So there are many many Linux distributions. Uh, Linux distributions essentially mean that uh, a person uh, or a group of people uh, work together to package different software uh, that, that interests them such that uh, into these into these distri different distributions. So uh, one of the most popular is Ubuntu, a very friend, user-friendly um, distribution that's taken on a lot of the kind of graphical features of a Microsoft Windows environment and is even beginning to ship uh, commercially on well, some computers. Sold commercially, but Ubuntu, the operating system itself, is free. Uh, 
Um, Ubuntu is actually built on top of Debian, which is a uh, kind of community-driven uh, distribution. So Fedora is actually uh, what's left over from the old Red Hat uh, distribution when it went commercial. Uh, Red Hat's now distributed commercially and typically used for servers and other things, whereas Fedora is more of an end-user operating system. Uh, and then there's many more, CentOS, OpenSUSE, Mandriva, Gentoo, and, and the list goes on and on. There are very, many, many flavors of, of uh, Linux, and uh, it's actually quite easy to, to build your own. So just a little bit about uh, the Unix architecture. This isn't a class in computer science, so uh, I'm not expecting uh, the people uh, listening to this course to know everything about uh, how kernels and shells interact. But uh, just to kind of the basic conceptual idea uh, is that uh, a Unix operating system has this kind of division of labor. So the kernel is actually what talks to the hardware, uh, the machine, through a set of drivers and other things. And it also has uh, many other tasks, such as it manages the system memory and scheduled processes, uh, and decides their priorities, and, and uh, performs other tasks that users wouldn't want to bother with. And so the shell, uh, you can think of it as uh, that, that it kind of uh, wraps around the kernel, uh, maybe hence the word shell uh, as a way to remember it. Um, that interprets the user commands. So uh, all of these uh, commands in this graphic are certain user commands that we'll learn about uh, in the course. Um, but uh, right now it's not important specifically what they do, but these are uh, commands that, uh, that are in uh, interpreted by the shell and sent to the kernel that then uh, perform some commands or perform some processes on on the um, hardware. So uh, an important feature of this is that even though there uh, is only one kernel running at a time in a Unix environment, there can actually be many shells, uh, one for each uh, user that, that is logged into the machine. So. So a key feature of a Unix operating system is that it is a multi-user environment. So we can have many users logged in at once uh, and run programs simultaneously that compute for memory and CPU time, and the kernel is what handles the scheduling of that. Uh, it's also, like I hinted there, a multitasking operating system. So uh, as an individual user or as a one of a multiple users, uh, you can run multiple tasks and multiple programs simultaneously, and the kernel will handle all of that. Um, while maybe formally Unix refers to uh, the kernel, you know, or one definition may be that Unix is the kernel, uh, the kernel by itself can't really do anything, so uh, that's of interest to the user. So Unix also provides a repository of applications. Uh, some of those are highlighted on the previous slide, and uh, they can be combined together uh, through things called pipes, which I highlight here, such that we take this building block approach in a Unix environment where the applications are small and simple, and they're intended to be piped or strung together to perform more complicated tasks. Um, Unix also has a sophisticated pattern matching. So I kind of hinted that with the asterisk earlier, but uh, you may have a series of um, files, let's say, for instance, that all have a, 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 a file extension uh, .c. These would be, say, C programs. And so if you wanted to combine them all into an archive on a Unix machine, you would use a, a command called tar, and you would uh, you could tar all of the C files in a directory uh, by using a regular expression, namely the asterisk, which is a, a wildcard, uh, .c, and th this would grab all of the C files in a certain directory, uh, and then you could tar them together, which a tar is essentially a tape or a, an archive uh, type, uh, maybe. 
familiar with a zip file on a, on a Windows environment. It would be something analogous to that, and, and we'll definitely learn about that later. Um, and then finally, uh, Unix and, well, through the shells uh, themselves, and by the way, there are multiple uh, implementations of the shell, which we'll also talk about. Uh, it, it is a, uh, intended to be a programming language, so it has all the necessary ingredients, like uh, control structures and loops and variables, uh, you know, that establish a programming language. And you can design these things to be called what are called shell strips to basically run many programs in batch. And uh, that'll be a, a topic of uh, a lecture in its own right to come. So uh, this was just to serve as a short introduction to Unix.